Hello there. Hi, how are you guys? Come on in, ladies. Come on in. Hello, hello. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, we're popping up on a Monday evening tonight around 7 o'clock. Uh, this is Pop-Up. My name is Dr. Angela Martin, and Pop-Up is People Online Praying Up. It is a prayer ministry for women, um, and we just come together every week at any given time. We just pop up and we pray together. So uh, thank you for being here tonight. I appreciate you. Hello, Angie Ryan. Didi, hello, 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 my precious. Didi, you haven't been with us in a minute. Where you been? <laughs> you haven't been live. Where you been, Didi? I've missed you. Hello, uh, Letitia Fields. How are you? Latarsha, God bless you. Tawana, always good to see you. Kelly Smith, come on in, ladies. Thank you for joining us tonight. If this is your first time again, uh, I repeat, I am Dr. Angela Martin, and this is Papa, People Online Praying Up. We're a group of women that pray every week together. We have a Bible study, and we pray together because we are growing in the Lord together. Um, I encourage you to invite all of your your girlfriends, uh, your girlfriends that are saved and born again and members of a church working in ministry, uh, but they do not have a personal relationship with God, meaning that they do not study the word every day, pray every day, worship every day. If they don't have that consistency with God, I want you to invite them. OK, so we can make sure that we're not just saved. We're not just church members. We don't just work in ministry, but we actually have a personal relationship with God. I know that is uh, somewhat of a provocative statement because a lot of people would feel like if you are doing all of those things, you have a personal relationship with God. But the only way that you can have a personal relationship with God is that you speak to him personally. You allow him to talk to you personally in his word. You worship uh, personally, you pray personally. And if you want that relationship, that's what you have to do. All right. So, um, make sure if you have uh sisters, you know, like I said, that are already saved, but you know, and they know that they need to have a closer walk with the Lord, please invite them to come to pop up. If you know any women that are not born again, please, please invite them because we definitely want to add to the kingdom every time that we are on live. Thank you for being here. Tawana Nichelle Johnson. Kisses, hugs. Thank you for always, always inviting others to come. I really appreciate you for doing that. I hope you had a, a great, you're having a great start of your week, rather. I hope today was great for you. It's going to be the beginning of something wonderful this week. We just decree and declare blessings and favor over your week this week. Hello, KL. Good to see you, my dear. So good to see you. Oh, you've been coming a little later, DD. I see your, your comment there. Okay. Well, you know, I missed you. <laughs> I love you so much. So thank you for whenever you tune in. Uh, even if you uh, uh, come back and watch the replay on Facebook. On Facebook, my replays will only stay there for 30 days. And then you have to go to YouTube. They're there forever. So if you ever miss pop-up on, on uh, my live here on Facebook, always go to my YouTube channel. Every pop-up from the beginning since we did it four years ago. Do you know we've been doing this for four years? All of those pop-ups are on my Facebook. Uh, YouTube channel. So make sure you you subscribe to Angela Martin Ministries YouTube channel. And whenever, like after tonight, this uh, video right here from Facebook will be uploaded to my YouTube channel. And you can get alerts when we upload those videos, okay? Latanya, good to see you, Latanya Taylor. Cynthia Mason, hello. Hello, my dear. Hello, good to see you. Uh, so, yes. Yeah, so, uh, Riley. Hi, Riley. Riley Lumpkin, good to see you. Uh, again, if this is your first time, uh, we study the word together and we pray together. You're going to use the comment section as your notepad. It is proof positive that when you write things, you type things, it is easier for you to remember them. So you're going to use that comment section to speak to me, to talk to me, to repeat what I say, to write down the scriptures. You're going to use your comments as your notepad tonight. OK, uh, so make sure uh, that you do that. All right, Delois Wild. Hello, Delois. Good to see you. Thank you for being faithful to prayer. Uh, Delois, thank you so much for coming every week. I appreciate you. All right, ladies, so you know how we do it. We've been doing this for, uh, is this six weeks? 
Uh, we're studying, um, I think this is the sixth book today. I have given, for those of you that are just joining us, I have given the ladies an assignment to read 10 books of the Bible. We are starting with the 10 shortest books of the Bible because I want you to get used to reading the Bible. Uh, so I'm starting you with uh, the shortest books because once you complete those books, you will have a feeling of accomplishment and they will encourage you to continue. When we're done with this, you will have read 10 whole books of the Bible. You, would have complete, you will have completed them. OK, so make sure that you are uh, uh, reading along with us. Some of the books are just one chapter like tonight. I'm going to teach from Obadiah. It's just one chapter, you know, so um, this way you can feel accomplished that you are, um, you know, your efforts are not in vain and you feel like you're making some headway, if you will. All right. So make sure that you are studying these books with us. If you want to get the list of books, go to my YouTube channel, AngelaMartinMinistries.com. You want to look at the um pop-up lesson from February 12th. I have on a plaid black and white jacket with a white shirt. It's February 12th. All right. So go to my YouTube channel, go through the, uh, the videos for pop-up and, 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 uh, make sure you look at the one from February 12th in that video. You have a list of the books that we are studying. Okay. So if you want to get the list of the books, go to my YouTube channel, February 12th pop-up. The list is there. It's not too late for you to join us. So you can join us right now. Okay. All right. You ladies, uh, um, in teaching you how to read the word, I want you to tell me the, uh, there are three words that I have given you uh, um, that are productive in uh, allowing you to actually digest the word. Tell me those three words. All right. Put them in the comments for me. Tell me those three words that I'm looking for. Uh, when re when you read the Bible, tell me those three words. Hello, Suzanne. Hello, my sis. Love you, dear. Love you so much. Tell me those three words that I'm looking for when you, you are studying your, your Bible. Hello. Hello, Olivia Young. Good to see you, dear. What are those three words? Read, meditate, and study. Angie Ryan, I love you for that. That's it. You read, you meditate, and you study. That is how you actually digest the word of God. I promise you, my dear sisters, when you just read the Bible, what you're actually doing is skimming because the Bible is too rich. <laughs> it's just too much in it for you to just, just read it one time and think you have received all of the meat that's in that. It's just like, you know, when you eat... Um, I don't particularly care for these. There's too much work to eat them. But you know how you eat crab legs. <laughs> have anybody that like crab legs on here? That's right, K.O. Read, meditate, and study. Sometimes you eat crab legs, you crack them, then you got to get that meat out of them. As I said, I don't prefer eating like that, but I know that's how <laughs> people do with their crab legs. They're trying to get that meat out of there. I just rather mine just be there, you know. <laughs> but how they crack them, you know, they're just professionals at it. They love doing it. Uh, that's how the word of God is. When you you when you read, you got to crack that thing open. You got to crack that Bible open. You got to crack those scriptures open. Then you dig in there and you get that meat out of that. So the first thing you do is, is in read when you first read it, that's like skimming. The second thing you do is you're going to meditate. You're going to meditate on what you've read and the Holy Spirit will speak to you. And that will lead you into studying even more scriptures related to that scripture, related to that verse. So you read, you meditate, and then you study. That is how you fully digest the word of God. All right. So let me know in the comments, which book are you on, ladies? Um, I think the, the, the book I'm teaching today is book number six, because it's the first book of the Old Testament that I assigned to you. All right. Let me know where you're at. Let me know where you're at. Thank you, K.O. You like that strategy? Thank you so much, K.O. Let me know which book you're in right now, ladies. Uh, where are you? Where are you? Come on. I'm waiting for you. Which book are you studying from right now? Habakkuk. Okay. Thank you, KL. Uh, Didi, where are you? Where are you now, Didi? You're in Nahum. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, Latarsha, you're in Philemon. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, let me get one more. Uh, where are you, uh, Tawana? Uh, let me see. Tawana, where are you? Uh, Latanya, where are you? You're in Obadiah. Awesome, Latanya. Wonderful, because you know what? Today, I am going to be teaching from Obadiah. <laughs> so you already know about this. And all right, so we're in Obadiah tonight, ladies. The scripture says, um, but on Mount Zion will be deliverance. It will be holy. And Jacob will possess his inter inheritance. I am in Obadiah tonight, but on Mount Zion will be deliverance. 
it will be holy and Jacob will possess his inheritance. Mount Zion is considered, ladies, to be the place where Yahweh, God, pardon me, the God of Israel dwells. That's what Mount Zion is considered as in the Bible, the place where God literally lives, where he dwells. Isaiah chapter 8 tells us the Lord of hosts dwells on Mount Zion. That's in chapter, Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah 24 says this, the Lord reigns on Mount Zion. Psalm 74 says, this Mount Zion in which thou hast dwelt. So Mount Zion is... Um, a city in, I'm sorry, a hill in the city of Jerusalem. It is one hill in the city of Jerusalem. And this is where the children of Israel, the people of Israel felt that, G well, it's not they felt, that is where God dwelt. That's where they met him at, is right on Mount Zion. Another meaning for, the, for Mount Zion simply is the holy place. When you hear people say Mount Zion, it is also considered as the holy place, all right? Mount Zion is the holy place. Mount Zion is also considered the kingdom of heaven. Okay. It's also considered the kingdom of heaven. So the scripture tells us in Obadiah, but on Mount Zion will be deliverance. It will be holy and Jacob will possess his inheritance. Jacob will possess his inheritance. Jacob and Esau were twins. All right. Uh, many of you that are, that that are joining me tonight are on the replay. You already know this 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 uh, this Bible uh, ex, uh, experience. What this occasion in the Bible? You know this thoroughly. But for the sake of those that may not know it, just indulge me tonight uh, as I kind of go over this. All right. So uh, Jacob and Esau were twins. Okay. Uh, Esau was born first, and Jacob came out second. And when Jacob Jacob came out second, he was literally holding on to the heel of Esau. The firstborn has the right to the father's inheritance. So even though they were twins, the twin that was born first had the right to the father's inheritance, which was Esau. So in Genesis 27, uh, Rebecca, Isaac's wife, and uh, Jacob and Esau's mother, she heard her husband Isaac, who was the twin's father, Jacob and Esau's father, Isaac was the father. She heard him telling Esau, the oldest son, the one that... Uh, that uh, had a right to the inheritance, okay? She heard him telling him, bring me food that I may bless thee before the Lord, before I die. So Isaac was literally telling um, Esau, I'm getting ready to die, so bring me some food. You know, you know what I like to eat. Bring me some food before I die. I want to bless you, all right? Isaac was losing his sight. Isaac was losing his sight. The twin's father, Isaac, Esau and Jacob's dad, he was losing his sight. He was an old man and he was losing his sight. So Rebecca, Isaac's wife, Jacob and Esau, the twin's mother, Rebecca, she counsels Jacob, the second born twin, uh, and shows him how to pretend to be Esau because she wanted Jacob to get this blessing. She did not want Esau to have it. All right. Are you with me so far? Come on, just put it in the comments. Let me know you're with me. Are you, as I said, many of you already know this story. Just in, indulge me tonight. Allow me to just uh, give a cliff note for those that may not know it. Are you with me so far? I want you to put it in the comments. Say, I'm with you, Dr. Angela. Come on, let me see if you're with me so far. You're following the story so far. You're with, yes, you're with me. Thank you, Tawana Webb. Okay, so Isaac was losing his sight. So Rebecca counsels Jacob to pretend to be Esau so that he could get the blessing instead of Esau. All right? All right? So what happened here is, is Jacob and Rebecca fooled um, Isaac. They fooled the twin's father. They fooled him. <laughs> his sight was going, so they decided to fool him. They bamboozled him. They tricked him. <laughs> they tricked, they tricked um, Isaac into thinking that Jacob was Esau. Now, J Esau was a very hairy man. Jacob, the Bible says, was smooth. His skin, his skin was smooth. So Rebecca uh, had, um, she had Jacob to go out and get a goat because Isaac liked goat meat. 
<laughs> so they were going to make him this really wonderful meal. So she went on, he went on and got a goat and then she kept the hair from the goat and she put it on Jacob's arms and on his, 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 um, his, his neck, just in case, the, just in case Isaac was going to kiss him or hug him. She put hair, the goat's hair on him so that the, so that when Isaac touched uh, Jacob, he would think that he was Esau because Esau was hairy. And the way that Jacob, uh, I'm sorry, that Isaac, um, distinguished, distinguished, um, Esau was by his hair. So what happened was Jacob, he put on hair. <laughs> they fooled this man so bad. This is terrible, <laughs> but they fooled him. So he put on the goat's hair so that when his dad, Isaac reached for him, he felt like he was Esau. All right. Okay, he felt like he was Esau, all right? So this is the inheritance, and he wanted, because because uh, Rebecca wanted I, um, Jacob to get this blessing and not Esau. So this is the inheritance that Obadiah is referring to. When we read Obadiah tonight, and Obadiah is saying, uh, um, this is where Jacob will possess his inheritance. This is the inheritance that he is referring to, Okay. So I, I, I want us to eavesdrop on the blessing, the inheritance, the blessing that Isaac gave Jacob, thinking he was giving it to Esau, but he gave it to Jacob. Listen to the blessing. This thing is deep. It is, it's, it's amazing. So this is what Isaac said to Jacob. He thought he was talking to Esau. That's who he thought he was talking to. But this is what he said to Jacob, thinking he was talking to Esau. He said, may God give you the dew of heaven and the richness of the earth. Listen to that. <laughs> it's like poetry. I just love it. Okay, let me, let me, let me start again. Do you get excited over the word like I do? I know y'all do, right? I just love it. So let me, let me start again. So this is Isaac's blessing to Jacob. He thought he was talking to Esau, but he's talking to Jacob. He said, may God give you the dew of heaven and the richness of the earth, abundant rain and new wine. May nations serve you and people bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers and may the sons of your mother bow down to you. May those who curse you be cursed and those who bless you be blessed. That's a blessing, isn't it? <laughs> that is rich, isn't it, Didi? <laughs> be blessed. My God, that's a blessing, isn't it? So this is what Isaac declared over Jacob thinking that he was talking to Esau. So before we move forward, my dear sisters, I thought this was so interesting when I was studying this for you. This was just so interesting to me that that there's another character in the Bible that had a dream that his brothers were bowing down to him. I got my Bible scholars on here tonight. I want you to let me know who I'm talking about. Remember, there's a person in the Bible who had a dream that his brothers were bowing down to him. Let, let, let me tell, tell me in the comments, who am I talking about? He had the same experience. Who am I talking about? I'm going to wait for you. Come on, my Bible scholars. Delois, I know you know it. I know you know it, KL. KL. <laughs> KL. KL. <laughs> Joseph. You're absolutely right. Remember Joseph had the dream? Remember he had the dream that the stars and the moon, everybody was bowing down to him. It was his brothers bowing down to him. Joseph had this same dream. I thought this was so interesting, my dear sisters, because Jacob is Joseph's father. My God, help me today. So literally the blessing that Isaac spoke over Jacob, which is Joseph's father, was the dream that Joseph had. And Joseph had the same dream. Isaac told Jacob, your brothers are going to bow down to you. Jacob's son, Joseph, had a dream that his brothers were bowing down to him. Isn't that deep? <laughs> it's in the lineage. It's, 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 it's in the lineage. It's an inheritance. It's a generational blessing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's a generational blessing. Don't you love digging in this word? Hallelujah. Isn't it so much fun? 
son. Glory to God. Thank you all for being here. It's so rich. Oh my God, it's all connected. It's all connected when we just sit and study it. So when Esau uh, was begging Jacob to bless him too, my dear sisters, I have to admit to you, this thing pricked my very soul. Oh my God. When Esau came to Isaac and he was like, Father, bless me. He was like, I already blessed you. He was like, no, that wasn't me. That was Jacob. Oh, my God. The Bible says that that Isaac was was sorely. Um, it was like he was trembling with anger that he had already spoke the blessing over Jacob. He had already spoken the blessing over Jacob. And Esau was so hurt. Oh my God. He was, Esau was telling um, Isaac, he was like, my father, my father. Oh, it was like my heart hurt for him. <laughs> he was like, my father, my father, please, please, my father. Do you have a blessing left from me? Woo! He was like, oh, my father, my father, please. Can you bless me too? It's like my heart just went out to him. He was like, please, my father, my father. Can you please, can you please bless me too? Please bless me too. Now I have always felt like my dear sisters. Let's be transparent. Let's be honest for, for all of you also that are new on here. We're honest on Papa. We tell the truth. Okay. <laughs> We tell the truth. We There's no pomp and circumstance on Papa. There's no pretense. We just a, we're a group of women that tell the truth. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, my dear sisters. I have always felt like Rebecca and Jacob were so wrong in stealing Esau's blessing. Oh, my God. I thought that was horrible. I thought it was so horrible that they did that to Esau and that they tricked Isaac like that. I thought that was so bad that they did that to him. But as I was studying this message for you, the Lord just brought this to me. He, had, he told me, he showed me how to look at this from Rebecca's perspective. So we're going to look at, uh, we're going to look at Jacob receiving this blessing from Rebecca's perspective. Okay. Because mothers know their children. How many mothers do I have on here? How many mothers do I have on here? Okay. Mothers know their children. Come on, give give me give me an um a raise hand in the comments. Am I telling you the truth? If you have 12 kids, you know each of them. Mothers know their children. Come on, let me see you in the comments. Do they know their children, my dear sisters? Mothers, yes they do. They know their children. Mothers know their children. I have God children. I have God daughters that are literally like daughters to me. Trust me, I know my God daughters. <laughs> I promise you I know them. Tunique, it's so good to see you, Tunique. So good to see you tonight. I have goddaughters. I haven't birthed any children, but I have goddaughters. I know my my goddaughters. I know them. I have nieces and nephews. I know my nieces and nephews. Oh, trust me, I know them. And mothers know their children. So we're going to look at this story tonight from Rebecca's point of view, from Rebecca's perspective. Rebecca knew, my dear sisters, that Esau, although he was the oldest, was not trustworthy enough to carry the responsibility and legacy of her husband, his father, and their inheritance. He, he couldn't handle it. She knew that, just like just like you know your children. You know what your children can handle, what they can't handle. Rebecca knew that Esau was not responsible enough to carry the inheritance, the legacy, the blessing of Isaac. He couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. First of all, let's just look at e Esau's resume here. Let's look at his reputation. Okay. First of all, who would sell something so precious as their birthright for a cup of soup? Do you know that Esau sold Jacob his birthright just because he wanted a cup of soup? Do you hear what I'm telling you? His birthright. He sold it for a cup of soup. So there was no way that Rebecca would want her husband's legacy, their father, Isaac inheritance legacy left in the hands of a man that would sell his birthright for a cup of soup. Glory to God. Are y'all with me tonight? We're looking at this tonight from Rebecca's perspective. 
We're looking at it from Rebecca's perspective. Because I'm going to tell you, honestly, I thought, Rebecca, girl, you know. That was evil for you to do that. But no, we're going to look at it from her perspective. She knew Esau couldn't handle her husband's legacy. The birthright, the blessing, the inheritance. He, she knew he couldn't handle that. Secondly, Rebecca speaks and gives us more insight, my dear sisters, in Genesis 27 as to why she knew that Esau couldn't handle this inheritance, this blessing. He couldn't handle it. He couldn't handle it. In Genesis 27, uh, Esau married Hittite women. Okay? He was forbidden to marry these women. But that's who he was attracted to. Esau and Jacob were not supposed to marry Hittite women. But Esau was attracted to the Hittite women and he married them. At the cost of his inheritance. Because that is partially the reason why he didn't get it. Because he married the wrong people. God help me today. It's in Genesis 27. It's in Genesis 27. He married the Hittite women. He was attracted to forbidden women. Okay. Have you ever been attracted to a forbidden man? Hello. 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 The one that you knew wasn't God's choice for you before we get, before we get pompous tonight. OK, but before before we get all pompous and proud. Oh, how could he do that? Have you ever been attracted to a forbidden man? I have. I've been attracted to a man that I knew wasn't good for me. Can we be? I Lord Jesus, help me tonight. Can we be honest? I've been attracted to a man that I knew wasn't God's best choice for me. So let's not judge Esau for marrying these Hittite women that he was attracted to. Have you ever been attracted to a man that was forbidden? That even maybe your parents even said, now you know that ain't the one. Maybe your girlfriends could be like, sis, he not good for you. Maybe God himself told you, no, no, no. Come on, let's raise our hands. Have we ever been attracted to that? Thank you, Suzanne. Me too, sister. Me too. We here. We right here. We right here. We right here. Me too. Me too. So so Esau was attracted to these Hittite women and he married them. Rebecca said, I am very weary of my life because the daughters of Heth, the Hittite women whom Esau has married. These women that Esau married, these Hittite women, my dear sisters, they vexed Rebecca to she didn't even want to live. God help me today. <laughs> They vexed her. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Genesis 27. Genesis 27. Rebecca said, these Hittite women, listen to me. These Hittite women continually vex me. They tease me. Uh, they are idolaters. They're irreligious. They're profane. Listen, listen at what this woman is talking about. These women that Esau married. They're profane. They're disobedient. They're contradicting. They're forward tempers and their behavior is erratic these are the women that esau her son rebecca's son married who had the right to the blessing rebecca was like uh-uh no you can't because mm -mm, these women cannot lord over me my god <laughs> and this is good and this good tonight rebecca was saying esau's wives if 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 Esau gets this blessing, if Esau gets this inheritance, his wives will lord over me. God help me today. These evil women that he's attracted to, who we he he who um my father, his father and me have told him don't marry them. He did it anyway. Uh Rebecca was like, "No, no. You can't have the blessing, son. Not with these women because I don't know what they will do with your father's inheritance, with his legacy. No." We don't know what they're going to do with that. We don't know what. So after Isaac blessed Jacob, he blessed Jacob. Uh, you know, he gave him the, the blessing. Esau didn't get it. He gave he gave Jacob the blessing, even though they tricked him into it. Do you know that Jake, that Isaac could not uh, reverse that blessing? My God, help me today. 
It would seem like Isaac just could have said, okay, I mean that. I want that for Esau. Listen to that, my dear sisters. Once they spoke a blessing, it could not be reversed. Whoop! Hallelujah. I decree and declare unto you tonight. Once God has spoken over your life, once he has spoken the blessing over your life, we got 66 books of blessing. This is why I encourage you and I'm taking you through these 10 weeks of these 10 books because once you know what the blessing is and you know it cannot be reversed, you will have faith. You will know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you're going to receive everything. God, hallelujah. That God has for you. The blessing could not be reversed. Woo! Hallelujah. If God says you're blessed, you're blessed. If God says you're healed, you're healed. If God says you're rich, you're rich. If God says you're prosperous, you're prosperous. Hallelujah. If God says you're the head and not the tail, you're the head and not the tail. If God says you're above only and not beneath in Deuteronomy 28, you're above only and not beneath. Hallelujah. The blessing cannot be reversed. Glory to God. It cannot be reversed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The blessing cannot be reversed. Glory to God. Come on, let's just pause. Hallelujah. Come on, put that in the comments. The blessing cannot be reversed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, sisters. The blessing cannot be reversed. Glory to God. It cannot. Hallelujah. Once Isaac blessed Jacob, he couldn't reverse it and give it back to Esau. Hallelujah. He had, that thing had to stand. Glory to God. The blessing will not be reversed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, let's just worship God for a moment, my dear sisters. Come on, let's bless his name. Lord, we thank you that the blessing will not be reversed. What you've spoken over my life cannot be reversed. Come on, ladies, let's worship him. It will not. Glory to God. It cannot be reversed. If God said it's yours, it's yours. I don't care what's going on. If God has promised you something, that thing cannot be reversed. Glory to God. I don't care if somebody else has it. They got to give it up. Hallelujah. Because the blessing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Cannot be reversed. The blessing God has given you for your husband, your children, your family, your business, you. It cannot, hallelujah, it cannot be reversed. So after Isaac blessed Jacob, he couldn't reverse it. It was, the blessing was his. So after Isaac blessed Jacob, Rebecca, Rebecca told Isaac, I am sick and tired of these local Hittite women. She told her husband, I'm tired of these women. I'm tired of these women that Esau is married. I'm tired of these women. She said, I would rather die than to see Jacob marry one of these women. Esau did it already. She said, I would literally rather die before Jacob marries these, Hitt these Hittite women. I would rather die. So then Isaac called Jacob to him and he blessed him. And he told Jacob, he said, do not marry a Canaanite woman. Go to Padam Haram, to the house of your mother's father. Take a wife for yourself there among the daughters of your uncle Laban and marry them. Don't marry these Hittite Canaanite women. Don't marry them. Go to Padam Haram. Go to your mother's father's house. You go there. You get a wife from there. Look at even the love that Isaac had for Rebecca. He was like, babe, you don't, you don't want him to marry these Hittites? Okay, I'm going to tell him. I'm going to bless him. I'm going to tell him who to marry. That he's going to marry someone from your house. So Isaac, you know the story about that. Isaac went and he married Laban's daughters. He married Leah first. He got tricked into marrying her. But he married Leah first. Then he married Rachel, the love of his life. But you know what? They were the, the women of of his uncle's house, the, the women that his mother was pleased with. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He was obedient to his parents. Esau, disobedient. Jacob, obedient. Look at this. Esau had the birth, Esau had the inheritance. It was supposed to be spoken over him. He sold his birthright. He just sold it for, to eat. Then Jacob really <laughs> stole his inheritance. That's what happened. But all of this happened from P Rebecca's point of view. It's because Esau was disobedient. 
She said, these Hittite women cannot lord over me. And if Esau has this birthright, he's going to lord over me and with these women. It can't happen. So tonight we're looking at this, this uh, story in the Bible from uh, Rebecca's perspective. Jacob obeyed his parents. Esau didn't. Romans chapter 9, Romans chapter 9, Romans chapter 9 is telling us that God said, Jacob, I have loved. Esau, I have hated. That's heavy, isn't it? I'm going to tell you something, my dear sisters. That also means rejected. Jacob, I have loved. Esau, I have rejected. I'm going to tell you. I, I'm, I'm, I just love love. <laughs> I don't even like to say the word hate. And I'm going to be honest with you. When I was studying this message for you, it was hard for me. I was typing and writing. I was like, Jacob, I have, I have a love. Esau, I have hated. It was, it's, it's like, I felt like, Lord, it's going to be difficult for me to tell the women that you hated somebody. Can I, can we be honest tonight? I had a little difficult time. And the Holy Spirit was like, it's the Bible. He said that. It's, it's hard. <laughs> It is hard. It was like hard for me to say that. Can we, my God, can we come to grips with the fact that God can hate somebody? My God, Jesus. <laughs> he said it. He said, I love Jacob. Esau, I hate it. My God, help me today. He said, Esau, I hate it. I love Jacob. Esau, I rejected. My God. Esau, I rejected. This deception, my, my dear sisters, is never right. It's never right to be deceptive. But Rebecca knew that Esau wasn't wise enough. If you're going to sell your birthright for a, a bowl of soup, Rebecca knew that Esau wasn't wise enough to, for this inheritance. He wasn't wise enough to carry his father's legacy. She knew her son. If you will sell your birthright for a cup of soup, you can't carry your father's legacy, son. Uh-uh. 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 He was moved by his appetite. See, Esau was moved by what he had a taste for. My God, help me today. He was moved by his appetite. He was moved by his cravings and by his desires for food and, and by his desires of his flesh. He was moved to the point of disobedience. He was so moved by his desires of, of, of his fleshly appetite, his, his actual physical appetite. He was moved to the point of disobedience to the point where he would literally give up his inheritance and give up his birthright. And Rebecca knew you cannot carry the blessing. Not, not if you that, that wishy-washy, not if you would give up everything to eat, not if you would give up everything because of a fleshly desire for the Hittite women, you would give up everything for that. No, no, you cannot carry our legacy. You cannot do it. And so when I was studying this, the Lord was showing me God loved Jacob's, his savviness. <laughs> God loved Jacob's obedience. Let's, let's look at it this way, my dear, my dear sisters. Let's look at it even this way. Jacob was even obedient to Rebecca to put the, the goat hair on to do. He was even being obedient to his mother. His mother told him to do that. God loved his obedience. Then he was obedient to his parents. He, he didn't marry Hittite women. He didn't marry any women of the Canaanite women. He went to his mother's uh, house, household, the, his mother's father's house. He went to his uncle's house. He married them, tricked into marrying Leah, okay, and then married the love of his, love of his life, Rachel, but he still stayed in his mother's father's house. He still did the right thing. God said, Jacob, I love. It's hard for me to say that, but I say it according to, to the word of God. Esau, I hate it. My God. We just want to be the ones that God loves. We just want to be that. But on Mount Zion will be delivered. It will be holy and Jacob will possess his inheritance. Obadiah. This is an Obadiah. Some things, my dear sisters, you will inherit that you will inherit will not be because you were in position for it. Jacob was not in the position 
for the inheritance. He was not in the position. He was second. Glory to God. Esau came out first. Jacob holding on to his heels, but he was second. He was not in position for this inheritance, but he still got it. There are some things you may not be in the position for, but you can still have it. Some things that you will inherit will be because you were smart enough. <laughs> you were witty enough to get it. Glory to God. <laughs> Never underestimate the wit of a woman. Come on. Come on, ladies. Don't underestimate her. Some things you're going to get just because you're witty. <laughs> Do I have any witty women on here tonight? You, you're witty enough to get it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There's nothing wrong with a woman's wit. You hear me? Glory to God. That's your blessing. Glory to God. Glory to God. East, uh, Jacob was witty. He was witty enough to get it. Some things you'll get, get because you're smart enough. You're witty enough. <laughs> Do you know there are some women that are not necessarily book smart, but they're more successful than women that got all kinds of degrees because they're witty. Don't, don't, please don't underestimate the wit of a woman. Hallelujah. <laughs> we need to post that. We need to hashtag that tonight. Don't underestimate the wit of a woman. Hallelujah. Some things you're going to get. Some inheritance you are going to receive. Inheritances you are going to receive because you're witty enough. You're smart enough. You're savvy enough to get it. And some other things, my dear sisters, you're going to get for one reason. Because God loves you. Hallelujah. Because <laughs> God loves you. Romans 9, God said, I, Esau, I didn't love. I, didn't, I hated Esau. I love Jacob. Jacob got that inheritance. That's why he got it. Because God loved him. Come on, let's just post that in the comments. I know God loves me. Come on, put it in there. We, I am not the one that the Lord hates. No, no, no. I am the one whom the Lord loves. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, put it in there, sisters. Say, God loves me. I know he loves me. Come on, put it in there. I know he loves me. God loves me. Yes, Tawana. Hallelujah. Uh, God loves me like he loved Jacob. Hallelujah. I am not hated like Esau by the Lord, but God loves me like he loved Jacob. So we're going to close in prayer tonight. And uh, we're going to pray uh, about our inheritance. Do you, do you understand, my dear sisters, that everything we receive is from our inheritance? It's the inheritance from the cross. There is nothing good that you receive that, that, that you earned. There is nothing good that you receive that did not come through the cross. Because remember, we were born in sin. We were shaped in iniquity. The only thing we deserved was death. God, help me tonight. So when Jesus died on the cross, he gave, he, we, we are his inheritance. We are, we are uh, joint heirs with Jesus. The Bible tells us that. Jesus is our elder brother. We are joint heirs with Jesus. So we have the inheritance of God. Hallelujah. Through the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. So everything you get, do you, God help me tonight. Do you understand my dear sisters that you are living off of your inheritance? Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're living off of our inheritance. You are healed from your inheritance. You are delivered from your inheritance from the cross, from being a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Your car, your house, your business, your money, anything that you have, you got it from your inheritance from Jesus Christ, from God through Jesus. You are a joint heir. You are heir of God. Hallelujah. A joint heir with Jesus Christ. You are living off of your inheritance. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That just makes us feel good. Doesn't that make you feel good? Because there are, there are some rich people in the earth. They don't even touch their money. That some of them just live off of the entrance of their inheritance. They don't even, they don't even touch the money. <laughs> They're living off their inheritance, my dear sisters. There are some people 
that are that are are, are are recipients of generational wealth like that. They don't even touch their money. They live off the inheritance of their forefathers, of their grandfather, their great grandfather. They're they're living off of their inheritance. We are living off of our inheritance. Hallelujah. Doesn't that make you feel rich tonight? Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm living off of my inheritance. Glory to God. Glory to God. I don't even have to touch my money. I'm living off my inheritance. Glory to God. I hope this word is blessing you tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't even have to touch my money. I'm living off of my inheritance. Glory to God. Because I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I am an heir of God. The whole earth belongs to me. Glory to God. Jesus, God told David in the book of Psalm, he said, ask the heathen, ask for the heathen for thy inheritance and the other most parts of the world for thy possession. Whoop! I feel like ran around my house. Hallelujah. It's in Psalms, my dear sisters. God told David, ask me the, for the heathen for your inheritance and the uttermost parts of the world for your possession. Glory to God. This is why I teach you in prayer. You thank God. You worship God. Then you request. You got to ask. God told David, you asked me for this. Oh my God. Ask me for the heathen for thy inheritance and for the uttermost parts of the world. Ask me for that for your possession. Father, give us the uttermost parts of the world. Hallelujah. For our possession in the name of the Lord Jesus. Glory to God. We're just abiding by the word. We're doing what the word says. Hallelujah. Ask for it. Glory to God. Y'all making me holler tonight. Don't make me holler tonight. It's Monday. <laughs> Y'all don't make me holler tonight. It's Monday. Glory to God. He said, ask me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm living off my inheritance. So tonight we're going to close in prayer. Hallelujah. And we're going to ask God. To keep us in line for our inheritance, to keep us in obedience, to make us wise enough to carry the blessing. We don't want him to give it to somebody else because we weren't wise enough. We don't want someone else to get our inheritance because we weren't diligent enough. We weren't wise enough. We weren't obedient enough. Let us learn this lesson tonight from Jacob and Esau. Jacob didn't get it because he wasn't wise enough. He wasn't savvy enough. He wasn't witty enough. He wasn't obedient enough. Glory to God. So Jacob just, Esau wasn't. So Jacob just, just swooped right on in there and got that inheritance. We cannot allow anybody else to take nothing from us. Hallelujah. Come on, let's pray, ladies. Father, we thank you tonight. We give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We are entering into your gates with thanksgiving. We are entering into your courts with praise. We are thankful unto you. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for calling us out of darkness. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. We thank you that we are daughters of the light. We thank you that we are not in darkness. We thank you that you saved us, Lord. We thank you that we have a relationship with you. We thank you, Lord, that we can pray to you and you can listen to us and hear our prayers. We thank you for hearing our prayer request. We give you glory tonight, Lord. We praise you, Father, that we have a personal relationship with you. We thank you for a desire to study your word. We thank you for a desire for prayer. We thank you for the revelation knowledge of your word. We thank you, God, hallelujah, that you are taking us deeper and deeper and higher and higher in you, in your word, in worship, in prayer, in Bible study. We give you praise tonight, Lord. We do not take it for granted when you talk to us, when you reveal your word to us. Lord, we thank you tonight. God, we thank you for life and health and strength. We thank you for the activity of our limbs. We thank you for meeting every need and every right desire. We thank you for making our dreams come true. We thank you for the joy of the Lord. We thank Thank you for the peace of God. We thank you for healing us, for delivering us, for making a way out of no way for us. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you praise tonight because you are a good, good, good father. And we give you glory tonight for being so good to us, for being so merciful, for being so kind, for being so gracious. Lord, we give you glory tonight for everything that you are to us, everything that you've 
done for us. God, 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 we want to let you know tonight that we're grateful. Hallelujah. We give you praise, Lord. We thank you, Lord. So, Father, tonight, as we have had this revelation knowledge in your word, we pray in the name of Jesus that we will receive our inheritance. Father, the blessing that you have for us, first of all, we give you praise that the blessing that you've spoken over our lives cannot be reversed. We give you praise, Lord, that once you've spoken it, it cannot be reversed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, those whom the Lord has blessed will not be cursed. Uh, hallelujah. Because you blessed us. Hallelujah. Uh, and we give you praise tonight uh, that it cannot be reversed. Uh, so we thank you for the blessing that you've spoken over us. Uh, now, Father, the inheritance that you have for us. Uh, Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, make us witty enough for the inheritance. Uh, make us savvy enough for the inheritance. Uh, Lord, business women that are, that are praying with me tonight, uh, help us to be savvy in business. Help us to be witty in business. Oh, Father, for every witty invention that you are downloading to us tonight, Lord, let us run with it. Let us run with the vision. Let us run with the witty invention. Let us run with the project, with the assignment. In the name of Jesus, let us be witty enough for the inheritance. Let us be wise enough. Let us be smart enough. Give us the discipline for it. In the name of the Lord Jesus, us. And then, Father God, keep us in obedience. Help us to be obedient, Lord. In the name of Jesus, help us to do what you said and do it quickly so that we can receive the inheritance, Father. In the name of Jesus. Come on, ladies, pray in the comments. Let's pray a little longer. Hallelujah. Help us to be obedient. Whatever you're telling us to do, Lord, to progress, to move forward, to excel, to elevate, to accelerate, to, to progress, Lord. Lord, let us do it immediately and swiftly. Help us to be obedient, Lord, so we can hold on to the inheritance. Father, let us be obedient in every way, in our relationships with our husband, in our homes, in our businesses, Lord. Help us to be obedient, Father, in the name of Jesus and all Oh God, let us learn from Esau. Lord, let us not, God, let our appetite and our cravings for things that are not pleasing to you. Let us not allow those things to cause us to miss our inheritance. Father, 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 we can empathize with Esau. We have wanted forbidden fruit. We have wanted forbidden things. We have wanted forbidden men. We have wanted forbidden relationships. Lord, we come to you Humbly today, we ask you, Father, even if we're in a situation right now that does not please you, give us, oh, Shaya. Give us a way of escape in the name of Jesus so that we can hold on to our inheritance. God, don't let us forfeit our inheritance for our craving. Don't let us forfeit our inheritance for our appetite. Don't let us forfeit our inheritance. For anything, Lord, in the name of Jesus, oh God, anything that we're not doing, that we're doing that's not pleasing to you. If we're in a relationship that is not pleasing to you, God, let them quit us. If we can't quit them, if we don't have the strength to walk away, let them quit us. Let them walk away. God is not worth it. It's not worth us giving up our inheritance because of something forbidden. So Father, in the name of Jesus, keep Keep us in line with your will, Lord. Keep us in line with your way. Keep us in line, Father God. Keep us in divine alignment with your plan for our lives so that we can receive the inheritance in the name of the Lord Jesus. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining me tonight. If you're just joining, my name is Dr. Angela Martin, and this is Pop Up. If you just joined at the end, we come on every week, and we study God's Word. We get a revelation, and we pray together, and we are growing in the Lord. You can go to my website, AngelaMartinMinistries.com. You can get my book. You can get my. You can sign up for coaching sessions. I have music on there. Just peruse through the website. You can get anything that you want that I have to offer. It's all on my website, so make sure you do that. If you're not saved tonight, 
Come on, let's get saved. Come on, repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, uh, I repent of my sins. I admit I'm a sinner. I am not living the way that you want me to live. I repent. I want to change tonight. Holy Spirit of God, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins, Jesus. I believe that you died on the cross for me and that you rose again. With my mouth, I make this confession. With my heart, I believe that you did it. And I believe now that I am saved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. My dear sister, say this right now. Jesus, save me. I accept you into my heart personally as my Lord and Savior. You are saved. Go to church Sunday. Uh, you know, somebody that goes to church. I'm praying and all the ladies on here, we're praying tonight that God will send you to the pastor that is supposed to cover you and to the village, the church family that is supposed to embrace you. You need a church home. Everyone needs a pastor. Everyone needs a church. All right. So make sure that you do that and then come back every week and I'm going to teach you how to get close to God. <laughs> all right. Come on back and you can do that. If this message blessed you tonight, if prayer blessed you tonight, which I know it did. I shouldn't say if because there is no if it blessed you. I know it blessed you. <laughs> so we'll see you tonight. Go to AngelaMarkMinistries.com. Click donate. Every way to sow is right there. Sow a seed into this word tonight. If you like to mail in your seed, the address is on my website as well. So you can sow a seed there. Okay. I love y'all so much. I hope this word blessed you. I know that it did. And I'll see you again next week again on Pop-Up. Kisses. Hugs. Love y'all. Have a great week. Love you. Good night.